This is iFiber One News. Here are today's top stories. Bail was set at $1 million for two men allegedly involved in the killing of Quincy resident Jill Sundberg. Homeless residents in Grant County can get help on Thursday at the annual Project Homeless Connect in Moses Lake. A motorcycle rider clung to the trunk of a car in Tumwater after the driver hit him off his bike. From the iFiber One newsroom, this is iFiber One News, and it starts now. Bail was set at $1 million for two men allegedly involved in the killing of Quincy resident Jill Sundberg. Julio Albaran Varona, a 25-year-old man, and Ambrosio Mendez Villanueva, a 25-year-old man, both appeared in court Tuesday afternoon facing a charge of murder in the first degree. The alleged shooter, Gustavo Tapia Rodriguez, a 39-year-old man, was arrested in Tacoma on an immigration hold and has been transported to the Grand County Jail. Tapia Rodriguez is also charged with murder in the first degree. Two other men, Fernando Marcos Gutierrez and Salvador Espinosa Gomez, are both charged as a material witness and are being held on $100,000 bail. The three defendants are accused of forcing Sunberg into an SUV at an RV park near Quincy on December 21st and driving down to a rest area along the old Vantage Highway where the victim's body was found the next day. Investigators say Tapia Rodriguez shot Sunberg multiple times before the suspects returned to the SUV and left the scene. Marcos Gutierrez and Espinosa Gomez were both allegedly with the three defendants at the time of the shooting. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. Homeless residents in Grant County can get help on Thursday at the annual Project Homeless Connect in Moses Lake. The event is held from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. at Our Lady of Fatima Catholic Church located at 200 Northdale Road and offers haircuts, showers, clothing, health screenings, employment information, and DSHS benefit enrollment, a warm meal, and other community services. A smaller community event is being planned by DSHS in Quincy from noon until 2 p.m. in conjunction with the Second Harvest Mobile Food Bank. The event is being held at 15 Second Avenue Southwest. Volunteers are also conducting the annual point-in-time homeless count throughout the county to determine the number of homeless individuals, living situations, age, gender, and other information. Last year, volunteers counted 135 unsheltered homeless people living in vehicles, outdoors, in abandoned buildings, or in homes without utilities. Last year's count included 97 adults and 38 children. This is Joe Utter for iFiber One News. That's where I hit right at his tailpipe, rolled over the trunk, and ended up sitting on his trunk backwards. Seth Dickman says it's the wildest ride he's ever been on. I grabbed the spoiler with my left hand, and uh, I was banging on the rear window with my right hand. Dickman says it felt like it lasted forever as he clung to the trunk of a car on I-5 in Tumwater. His helmet cam gives a frightening new look at the crash that's going viral. I was just merging behind slow traffic getting over, and at the last second, he blows by me. Dickman says the car nearly ran him over. I had not been, been on the freeway for more than 10 or 15 seconds before this all happened. He slams into the back of the car. Washington State Patrol says witnesses told troopers Dickman was driving erratically. He denies that and points out the other driver. No brake lights. He didn't have any brake lights. And uh, as soon as I rolled onto his trunk, he hit the gas. <laughs> For a quarter mile or so, Dickman banged on the back window for the driver to stop. And when the driver finally did stop... He looked shocked that I was still attached to the car. Washington State Patrol says the other driver was intoxicated, didn't have a license or insurance. Forks bent, skin down the side. Dickman's just thankful to be alive, and he says he wants that spoiler in the car he crashed into. That was the one thing that saved my life that day. Cloudy this week. From the iFiber One Weather Center, I'm Jeff Slakey taking a look at the basin's forecast. For Monday, 36 and clouds. Mostly cloudy for Tuesday and the rest of the week. The highs are going to be in the low 30s. The lows are going to be in the low 20s. No real change through the weekend. For iFiber One, I'm Jeff Slakey. This is iFiber One News. For more information on these stories and other news, Visit us online at ifiber1.com or check us out on Facebook.